This is Seven National News and in our top story, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, will conduct a discussion with his 10 million followers on social media platforms titled Dialogue of the Future at the fourth edition of the World Government Summit that's going to be held at the Madinat Jumeirah next week. During his interaction, he will answer questions on his vision for the future of the government, education, health, cities and other vital sectors. The fourth edition of the summit under the title Shaping Future Governments will begin on February the 8th and run until February the 10th under the patronage of the ruler of Dubai. It will be attended by over 3,000 participants from 125 countries, including top dignitaries, leaders and experts from the government and private sectors around the world. The US President Barack Obama will address the summit on its first day with a keynote speech via closed circuit television and is guest of honour at this year's event. The President of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, will share the experience of his country in saving one million citizens from poverty. Leading international organisations including the United Nations, the League of Arab States, the World Bank, the GCC, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development and the World Economic Forum will also participate in the summit this year. The World Government Summit is a knowledge forum that gathers representatives of academic institutions and scientific research centres, as well as university students, who are invited to share their future visions and aspirations. The summit presents and discusses over 70 topics, highlighted, of course, by top speakers. Ties between the UAE and Argentina are strong and are based on a long history of shared economic and international interests. That was announced by His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the country's foreign minister. He highlighted that non-oil trade between the two countries reached 260 million US dollars in 2014, with a great potential for more, and made the comments on the occasion of his recent visit to Argentina. The minister was quoted in a daily saying that I'm delighted to be visiting Argentina in order to renew these bonds and to extend the UA's warmest congratulations to the new Argentinian government on its recent election. He added that the Argentinian trade office at Jebel Ali port in Dubai and the UA trade office in Santa Fe have both played an important role in allowing bilateral trade to rise to its current level. He stated that the 15 million US dollar financing made by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development in collaboration with the International Renewable Energy Agency in Nahave Hydro Power Project is a strong indicator of what they hope to achieve through close cooperation between the two countries in protecting the environment for future generations. The UAE announced the provision of 503 million dirhams during the fourth Syria's donors conference over in London. The conference took place in the presence of heads of state and government, as well as representatives of international humanitarian organisations. Her Excellency Sheikh Lubna Al Kazmi, the Minister of Development and International Cooperation, who is also the President of the UAE's Committee on Foreign Humanitarian Aid, led the UAE's delegation to the conference where the country announced a renewed commitment, pledging the equivalent of 137 million US dollars in humanitarian aid, and in the hope that such assistance will ease the suffering for those in Syria. Her Excellency Sheikh Lubna said that holding such conferences, whose direct results are seen every day, has become an absolute necessity in order to reduce the pain and preserve the human dignity of Syrian people. She added that UAE humanitarian aid to Syrians since 2012 has exceeded 2.2 billion dirhams, the equivalent of 600 million US dollars, which constitutes about 0.15% of the UAE's gross national income. The value of UAE aid directed to Syrian refugees in the hosting countries and the neighbourhood has also amounted to 2 billion dirhams. The minister discussed the qualitative efforts and initiatives undertaken by the UAE, including the establishment of the Emirati Jordanian camp, as well as the Emirati camp in northern Iraq, 
which accommodates about 15,000 Syrian refugees. The UA has also built the Emirati Jordanian Field Hospital in Mafraq, which receives around 800 patients on a daily basis. The UA also conducted a vaccination campaign against polio inside Syria, established mobile clinics catering to refugees outside of camps, and has also increased focus on improving health care. Her Excellency Sheikh Lubna noted that the UA's initiatives aimed to improve education through the construction of four schools and a kindergarten, as well as the implementation of educational projects and training programs for teachers in Jordan, northern Iraq and in Egypt. The Roads and Transport Authority is looking to convert 50% of Dubai taxi cabs to hybrid vehicles by 2021. As announced by His Excellency Matt Altair, the Director General and Chairman of the Board of Executive Directors of the RTA. The move is a part of a master plan to reduce carbon emissions of the taxi sector by 2% to fulfil the requirements of the Dubai Supreme Council of Energy and the Green Economy Drive. According to a statement, the step was prompted by the deregulation of fuel prices and the low life cycle cost of hybrid vehicles compared with normal ones. Altair revealed that the plan looks to expand the fleet of hybrid taxicabs in Dubai from 147 last year to 791 by 2016, 3,959 taxicabs by 2020 and to 4,750 by 2021. He added that the Dubai Taxi Corporation will account for the lion's share by as many as 2,280. It was also revealed that carbon emissions generated by a normal vehicle is estimated at 182 kgs per day, while a hybrid vehicle generates about 121 kgs, that's 34% less. Studies show that replacing all taxi cabs in Dubai with hybrids would reduce carbon emissions by 20 to by 230,000 tonnes per year, which translates into saving around 170 million dirhams. As a part of its strategic plan, the RTA is also planning to replace all streetlights with LED ones by 2030, which would reduce the carbon footprint of the RTA's operations by around 27,000 megatons of carbon. 1,016,740 vehicles were recorded on the roads over in the capital during the past year. That's according to the recent figures from the Vehicles and Drivers Licensing Department of Abu Dhabi. According to Colonel Suhail Saeed al khalili the Chief of the Vehicles Licensing Section at the Vehicles and Drivers Licensing Department, there are seven different categories of vehicles. These are 908,000 light vehicles, 45,885 heavy ones, 18,519 heavy buses, 2,758 light buses, 23,051 heavy duty machinery vehicles, 7,518 light duty machinery vehicles and 10,389 motorcycles. Colonel al Khalili said that all vehicle licensing transactions and other services are provided through the Ministry of Interior's smart application, UAMOI, as well as the Sahel device. He stated that Abu Dhabi had 50 service centres, while there are 24 in Abu Dhabi, 16 in Alain and 10 in the western region. Sharjah's airport bridge heading towards al Qurayn and al Jurayna areas has been closed. The Sharjah police made the announcement stating that the closure is due to maintenance work and that a lane in the opposite direction will be open for two days from Friday 12 a.m. to Sunday 12 a.m. Police are instructing vehicles coming from the airport to use the airport road heading towards intersection 3. It was also noted that police patrols are around to assist motorists and also divert traffic towards alternate routes and help passengers reach the airport on time. And finally, looking to other news now, for 10 nights, the Sharjah Light Festival is transforming the Emirate into another world and will continue to do so until the 13th of February. 
as a part of a festival, landmark buildings and key heritage locations are taking on spectacular displays of light and colour, transforming them into works of art. Now, in its sixth year, the festival continues to attract thousands of visitors and families to the Emirates. A dazzling display of lights and innovative performances are organised every year using the latest technology and, of course, under the supervision of international experts. These displays utilise 3D and 2D animation techniques to highlight the beauty of Sharjah's famous cultural icons through graphic designs, calligraphy and a fusion of colours. Festival activities are taking place across the Emirate from 6pm to 11pm every day and extending until midnight over the weekends. This year, the Light Festival is taking place at 23 locations around Sharjah, compared to 14 last year. We invite all of our visitors and audience and residents of the United Arab Emirates to come and enjoy the spectacular shows uh, on these iconic buildings uh, that reflect the culture and uh, the heritage and uh, our uh, authentic Arabian uh, traditions and experience. So to know more also about the festival, it is very important to visit www.sharjalightfestival.ae and through this website there is a lot of information on transportation, on different locations, on many many different, a lot of information about the festival and in addition to that we do have a contest or a competition for photography uh, for professionals and also people who just like uh, uh, who like photography as a hobby so these competitions are uh, really rewarding and uh, it's very important to uh, to uh, for us that uh, our audience are engaged with us in this uh, through this festival we almost doubled the number of locations between this year and uh, the previous years and uh, this shows you that uh, or shows our audience that this festival is very important to us and we have what it takes in the Emirate of Sharjah to host these kind of festivals. Now, if we talk about the surrounding region, this is the only festival that, uh, that, that is taking place in the whole region actually.